Bernice, I wanted to welcome you to the first episode ever of this new show called Winging It. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited to be here to the first one. How did I get so lucky? <laughs> and I was like, I've been wanting to start this show for about 22,000 years. And yesterday I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And I just was like, who's who I want to talk to? And it was you. And you said yes. And I was like, great. You're like, how are we meeting? I'm like, I don't know. I'll send you. I'll figure it out. And I'll send you a link. <laughs> what's with um, the questions <laughs> yeah like why are you asking me hard things just like show up and i'll find you something <laughs> oh god but i actually i i've been wanting to have these conversations with people like you like that are actually just out there creating create cre out there creating your life and also creating stuff for other people to be a part of and changing the world and all that amazing shit and um i wanted to have them because what i what i what i so many things all at the same time. Let me see if I can get it out. I do, as do you, a lot of business facilitation, a lot of business coaching. And one of the things that comes up so many times with people that are just starting businesses is like, um, I don't know where to start. I'm not going to have anything to say. Um, you know, like if I, and, and so basically all that stuff around starting. And what I see a lot of us doing is simply winging it. We're literally like, willing to like show up and just fucking put shit out there and see what happens. Would you, would you say that about sums up your business experience? <laughs> Pretty much it about sums up my business experience. I started in 2002 and I have been, you know, winging it just like that ever since. <laughs> so you started, well, you, so I don't actually know a whole lot about you. And I think there's a lot of people that might be interested in your story. And I, we don't have to start at the very beginning, but like when you, so you said you started in 2002. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Like what, why, how, how did you, what made you feel so crazy that you could start a business? Like, tell me more. Yeah, it was very strange. My background is psychiatric nursing and I was working, right? I have so many questions about that. I know, I know. I, know. Uh, I was working with people with disabilities and I was, I'd worked my way up in the company and I was working, I was doing grant proposal writing and I hated it because I had no interaction with with people anymore uh, plus every place I applied to said no so that didn't help me so I uh, I went and actually saw a psychic I used to see one once a year many many moons ago just like on your birthday or what um it was whenever the psychic fair came to town <laughs> What do you ask a psychic? I've never seen a psychic. What happened? You know, what I did for probably the first, I don't know, five times I saw her was I didn't have a question for her. She just did the cards and told me what was coming up. And, and I mean, I, I really believe that that was the way it was in, in a certain sense. Um, okay. I wasn't nearly as empowered as I am now. Um, and so, but that time I did have a question for her because that time I did go in because I was so unhappy with what I was doing. And so I said to her, what can I do meaning work-wise to be happy? And what she said to me was, you're a healer. You can be mm. a nurse, which I was. You can be a Reiki practitioner, which I didn't know what that was. You can be a physiotherapist. As long as you're healing, you'll be happy, is what she said to me. Huh. Yeah. Which then I took very literally, you know. <laughs> like you do. As you do. Um, it's, but it, it opened the door to what the heck is Reiki? Like I hadn't really heard of it. Uh, and so then anyway, took a Reiki class, asked my, asked my employer to lay me off. So I had some um, EI, unemployment insurance money coming in for a while. My plan was, <laughs> my plan was to, um, to get some retraining with the psych psychiatric nursing so I could go work in a prison. Because in a prison back then, you made about $65,000 a year, which for me, that was huge. And I had decided if I was making more money, I would be happy. How's that work? Does that turn out to be true? Um, not, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't get the training. The government wouldn't give me the $1,000 to go do the training. So, you know, when, when we say the universe has your back, <laughs> the universe had my back. Anyway, took a Reiki class, uh, you know, no plans of doing anything with it except for me. And uh, within, of course, three months, I woke up and I'm like, this is going to be a business. And then I really had this kind of <laughs> ridiculousness of who wouldn't want a session? Like, <laughs> 
everybody's gonna want a session like duh <laughs> anyway that didn't work out so well but anyway back in uh september of 2002 i started i started that business and i added clinical hypnotherapy to it and then well, i how just did, so started, how did so you say you started it but like how did you start it um so i was on ei so they had free and like kind of small business training so you could go in and talk or like did, did a program on here you know how to do time management and how to do your books and stuff like that um i don't know that that really helped me at all like i don't recall any of that information going oh yeah um it's changing my life right now yeah no mm -hmm. but i had really like since i was probably 12 been in some sort of business i had been running some sort of a business since you know i was selling bath salts and my mom has been in business pretty much her entire life and so i guess i kind of got business in a sense from osmosis okay. I, I would say and so then you know when i started officially started in in that year it was kind of simple you get brochures i mean again we're talking 2002 you get brochures you put posters up um you get people people had already been playing with the reiki with you know they were kind of my connectors we might call them you know so yeah. they're out in the world and um and then just doing a one-to-one -one sessions in in my small town uh didn't really work that well and i still required to bring in um, a certain income so then of course i did <laughs> what us entrepreneurs do and kind of go so now what so now yeah. what yeah and, and started traveling with it so then I would go to my hometown where, you know, I had connectors because some of my family were loving it. So they were telling people, so I would book a day or two of sessions. And then that ended up with me going to another town, which another, so then I kind of started traveling within Alberta and, and um, Saskatchewan. And that, that was the, you know, a big part of my business was that. And then it just branched off into all sorts of modalities and things until access in, in 2011. So what, what for you, like what set access consciousness apart? Like what was the difference? So for me, much like going and seeing a psychic once a year and all of that, I, I had really disempowered myself and, and been disempowered, we could say. Um, and so what access did was it invited me to me knowing. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, that was an ease. <laughs> you know, I, I fought that for a while. Like, I, I didn't like that idea, like, because I had put years and years and years into the creator knowing everything, my angels knowing everything, my guides knowing everything. Like, if I wanted to choose, and I remember with clinical hypnotherapy, I had a choice between uh, a program in Toronto and a program in Calgary. And it took me a week to get the response from my team. Whereas, you know, so I mean, it created, except it was extremely slow, where now I could ask, so truth, Calgary, truth, Toronto. Right. You know, I, I can get the awareness in 0.7 seconds instead of seven days. But that's what I was doing. And so, you know, it, it felt a little bit like pulling teeth, kind of stepping into being empowered. But when I did the freedom of that, like that, that just changed everything for me. So, so, I mean, we're talking, so when, when did Access jump into your life? It was like- 2011. 2011 where so it's like nine nine years so uh, <clears throat> did you become a certified facilitator quick like how how did that work uh 2012 the, the so it's like within a year sort of thing yeah same for me yeah i just like ran but i was looking for i knew i was looking for something else and then i thought that something else was something else and then i found access and i was like wait a minute hold the phone like this is it you know <laughs> yeah so you'd already been creating a business so for you starting a cf business like what was the what, how did how i'm doing a lot of how questions because this is what people ask it's like how did you do that um i would say with the same ridiculousness of who wouldn't want to come to a <laughs> class who wouldn't want these tools like of course they change everything everybody's gonna be coming yeah that sort of same same idea really um yeah. and and i already had the basis right i already had clientele now 90 percent of them were not interested in being empowered <laughs> so you know as i i didn't officially change my business 100 percent until about 2013. So it took me, you know, it took me about three years to baby step it into empowerment and away from the disempowerment of giving answers. 
Now let's talk about that for a second, because what's the difference? I don't even know if you can put this in the words, but maybe we'll explore it. It's like, what's the difference between, you know, a business that disempowers not even knowing and like a business that empowers, like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. So for me, I don't mean I disempowered people and I, you know, yeah. sat up late at night and tried to figure out how I could do that. I mean, I that, you. That, right. In, in my world, I was really contributing and I actually was, I really was. I'm, I'm not downplaying any contribution I was in, in doing what I was doing. Uh, once I started studying access and got that I know and got how pathetic I played for so many years, pretending I didn't know, Mm. Then, you know, when people came in and asked me, when will I get married or asked me to talk to their, you know, their dead grandma to find out from grandma when they will get married or any of that sort of stuff. I really started to sense that if, if we do that in that way, we'll do that in any way. That means we'll go to a doctor and whatever he says to us, we're, we're going to take home and make real. We're going to, you know, be gaslighted by people anytime because whatever other someone else says to us that we've put into a bit of a position becomes true. And so when I talk about disempowered and empowered, I did empower a lot of people and, and a lot of the information that I gave changed lives. Absolutely. And what I love about what I can do now is that they can go home and continue to change their life. The way I was doing it, they needed to continue to see me to change mm. their life and yeah. I was giving answers and so there was no question in in my world or their world of is what I'm saying actually true for them mm -hmm. so it's yeah so uh, and just sort of switching gears into like like business like business talk so the the business itself like how does the did did the way that you create your business change with the insertion of the access tools you know like and and how what would you say is one of the most major differences you sort of mentioned before like i can just ask a question now and get a response um is that the major difference or would, is there some other way you would sort of talk about the difference in using the tools in business i, I would say that's a huge way but the other one that kind of pops as you ask that crystal is um the way that I was creating business was very much, I was deciding what it should look like, put it on the vision board, be really specific, ask only for that, you know, kind of only see that as a possibility. Um, and again, that's not wrong. It was one way that I was creating. And shortly after I started using the tools, one of my favorite and to this day is, is what else is possible that I've never even considered. And that piece to me never even considered that has blown my life, my business, my reality apart billions of times in the past nine years, because, you know, I, I opened a brick and mortar uh, place for classes in, in a town I lived close to uh, back in, I think, 2013. And I opened that so my classes would get bigger. So I'd have more in-person sessions. All, I had all these conclusions around it. Yes. Uh, yes. Right. As we do. Yes. Uh, and then I got an invitation to be a radio show host on Voice America. So that added to my conclusion of, well, if I do that, then now my classes in person are going to get way bigger, blah, blah, blah. And what ended up happening was that's when the global invite started. So that's when I started creating my business around the world because people in Ireland were hearing my radio show and going, wow, I'd love to take a class. And then, you know, a person reaches out, would you come here and teach a class? So I had a three year lease with that building and a, within a year and a half, I, 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 somebody else came and took the lease over. So yeah, that would be beyond, I'm, nope, that's good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just like, that's something that business done normally, I don't see as much of like that willingness to, to take an idea and just go, well, it's not working or it's changed or it's just whatever I created this with isn't doing the thing and like never mind and go on to the next thing has that level of malleability shifted for you like has that gotten greater over <laughs> oh my god so much so much like because there there would have been a time i wouldn't have done it even if i knew the best thing to do was to let that lease go i wouldn't have because of the form and structure of i signed the lease i said this i would look like a failure like all that all of that instead of now i don't actually give a shit if I put something out there, it doesn't work. I throw it out I, and I don't necessarily throw it, out, throw it aside and yeah. I might come back to it later. Who the hell knows? Like, I don't care. Like, yeah. 
if we don't make it personal or significant, it really is irrelevant. So you've grown, I admire you very much. I admire what you're doing. I admire the way you've grown your business. I also just love hanging out with you. I think you're fucking hilarious. Um, uh, and I know I'm not the only one. So uh, what was I going to ask you about that? I know for a fact that you do a lot, of, you educate yourself, like not just with access consciousness tools, but you like, you take other courses and you learn from other people and you're like, it seems from the outside looking in that you might be on a constant like, hey, what else, what else, what else? Is that true? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious. And I, um, again, years ago, if I educated myself in something, then I kind of also took it on from that kind of pathetic place of this is the answer. Whereas now I kind of receive the information and keep what feels yummy and let the rest go. So it's not near as kind of structured as it used to be, but it's definitely always looking, always looking for what else. And, and a lot of that's from boredom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm bored with this. Now what else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and the reason I ask about that, I had somebody message me the other day and it was, it was an innocent message. I actually work with her and she's like, do you think I could play the piano like you do with like no practice? and no lessons, no lessons is what she said. And I said, well, I mean, you could ask. I said, the way I play now, not that it's the greatest way, I said, but it actually came from like 12 years of uh, piano lessons and three hours a day of practicing it. <laughs> and I learned all these different methods of, you know, ways to like, I know all this theory about music. And so I can take all that information in one moment and I can actually sit down at the piano and I can make music with it. Um, but without that information, I actually don't get that I would be able to do that because I wouldn't understand like how things could fit together and the different possibilities with all the notes. And I see you making music with your business. And I wonder if people actually get how much um, of whatever that is in you, you've chosen to be able to create the music that you do. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and And I think it's what I mean, many of us do maybe naturally, or maybe we're just not willing to be aware of how much people put into their art, whatever their art is, whether they're a dentist and it's their dentistry or whether it's an entrepreneur with their businesses or whatever it is. Um, Cause it's, I, I, I would say, and this may or may not actually be true, but I, I would say for a lot of us, it's, it is an art form. It isn't, yeah. it's not just like, I'm going to get up and do business because then we can eat next week or pay our mortgage or whatever. I mean, that, that's a nice side benefit, but it's irrelevant, really. It's In the, fact, for me, I don't know about for you, but like when it gets down to that, if it ever does for me, where I'm like, well, I have to put something, I'm like, I've lost total inspiration. And I'm like, I need to go looking for what's fun and like, where am I now? What do I want to create? Like, and I, you and I've had conversations about that, like, Okay, never mind all that. Like, what's next? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Because if, if there isn't that energy in it, it's yeah, it, yeah you're, it's a push and it's a fight. And even if people don't know they're aware, they're aware. So if they're tapping into the the creation, they're gonna feel that energy too. Yeah. So, I mean, we, you, we're having this conversation for those of you guys listening in the future, right in the middle of the quarantine and the coronavirus, that thing that's happening now. And I remember speaking to you just, just people, just those people like pre this, and we were both like, yeah, everything, even before the virus like came out as a thing, we were both like, oh, everything's changed. Like, uh, I wonder, maybe I'll just go be a monk. I don't think either one of us said that, but you know, like it was... <laughs> I know like you've recently started taking your business apart and gone like blank slated it almost. And I did something very similar, like three or four weeks, not related to what you did. I was just like, Ugh. like, let's just do something new. And um, so like for you uh, and this, I don't know, we can just talk about this cause I don't, I'm sort of putting you on the spot and I'm just looking at it myself, but it like, are you using, what kind of tools or conversations are you having with yourself as you're moving forward in this new sort of shift? And like, what are you looking at with the changes that have obviously occurred in the world? And how are you looking at it? And what are you, you know, like, what's that? Yeah, I mean, there's so many pieces with this because it's, it's a, it, to me, it's a new place for all of us to be in with business. And um, 
the whole what else is possible that I've never even considered is still what I'm using. Uh, yeah. And then the other thing, a couple of things I've done is been like, I would say 98% diligent with what is my point of view here. Because what I'm so aware of right now is that, and I, I've known it for a long time, I've experienced it for a long time that our point of view creates our reality. But right now, the points of views that business is hard or people don't have money or like all, all the stuff is so strong that I really am in constant check of myself of what, what is the point of view I'm operating from right now. And if it needs to change, then of course I clear it. Um, and then back to what we were just talking about, what's fun for me? Because I also don't want to be at the effect of this virus. So I'm not going to kind of go, oh my gosh, I need to do this or I need to do that. And I did that a little bit at the beginning, um, kind of like in, in kind of a weird way for me that I would say I wouldn't have ever thought I would have done before. And, uh, and then I was like, and it was good that I did because it actually got me to recognize like, wow, I really bought into this for probably, I don't know, 48 hours. And then it was like, oh wait, what would I like to choose here? What would I like to create here? And also looking at kind of all that form and structure and everything of, of what else? Like what else? And I know when you and I talked last, I was like, I, I even looked at jobs. Yeah, Not I know. Places, like I'm desperate or we can't eat no. next. It wasn't from that. It was like, okay, one, because the, the virus stuff hadn't happened yet. And so, and there was such a funny energy. I couldn't say yes to people asking me to other countries for the life of me. I couldn't I say yes. I thought I was dying. I'm like, what in the hell is going on that I can't even say yes to people? Or if I did manage to say yes, it was still so sludgy. There was no creation possible. And so, you know, and so I started looking at jobs or anything just to really break out of the, the solidity of I need to have a business or it needs to look a certain way. Like really, yeah. And so for me, what else is possible? I've never even considered here. What's fun for me? And everything and i can't remember years ago crystal you and i talked i think you and stephanie had a, a word you or a statement you'd say something like you say that like it's real you say that like it's a fact that's it that's the one so it's kind yeah. of like i'm i'm being that to myself in my head constantly to either what's coming out of my mouth or what am i thinking yeah gosh there's so much i want to ask you i well, so just yeah. wait what about you Oh gosh, I, I think more than ever, um, I'm just like claiming that, you know, like we, we live on a reality of quicksand and anywhere I was trying to, yeah, gosh. So that's piece number one. There's so many, there, there, there's so many different pieces to it. Um, and this is, I guess to, t to speak to that for those of you guys watching, like when you are as aware as you are, like you are going to get, so, you get so much information all at the same time. And that's, what's been going on. Well, that's always what goes on. And then in times like these, it's like, I don't know, ramped up by a factor of 80,000 or something. And so like, I've just been really staying really aware of like the poss what possibilities are available now is the question I've been really asking. What possibilities are available now? Like right now, right now, right now. And then also continuing to look at, which is obviously not an I thing, the future and going, is there anything I'm aware of yet? Because there are periods of time where I can get a real sense of the future and like, and I don't know how to explain that. It's just like, I have a sense of the future. I'm like, I kind of know where I'm going in no linear way, but it's like, I kind of, we're going there. And there's other times like now where I'm like, I can't actually perceive it. I can perceive up to a certain point. And then I'm like, beyond that, it doesn't really do it. So I'm like, okay, so what's occurring right now energetically is this like incredible just change you know, and it hasn't settled yet. Even if you look at the stock markets, my partner and I play in the stock market a little bit and the stock markets are doing that thing right now too. And they're going to do another dive. And so, so it's just, so I've just been staying aware of all that. But the other thing I've been asking is like, is there anything that I can create that would put me on the, the leading edge or the creative edge of where, what the world is going to require next that I can, that I can create? And so I've been looking at different things in regards to that and sort of putting business ideas together. Um, but yeah, sort of those two things of like this, you know, there's a, there's different something, gosh, words. There's just something different available. And what is it? 
And that, those four questions from Access are like game changers and they're also infuriating <laughs> sometimes. But, <laughs> but they, they go like this, like, what is it? What can I do with it? Can I change it? And if so, how? And so I'm just really staying as those questions a lot. Like, what is it? And I, so every morning I wake up, I look at my business, whatever that is, this big sprawling, you know, tentacle thing and go, yeah, what can I, where can I put my energy today? And then I just look at what pops and that's just, I guess, I, you know, that access, access is the one that gave me access to the ability to ask those kind of questions. Um, for me, it's been much more of a clinging to question as an actual way of functioning, which has been a real gift because I think before this, I was more, I was doing that, but like maybe not as much, or I was like sort of doing it or in and out of conclusion. And now I'm like, I, you can't like, you can't conclude anything because nobody fucking, <laughs> nobody knows from a cognitive point of view. And so if you're not paying attention to the energy, then you miss the openings that are going to occur that we can step through if we're ready or willing or whatever. So it's weird talking about it because it sounds very theoretical. Like, yeah, but it kind of is in like, yeah, but it kind of is. <laughs> yes. And I've literally been like, just jumping on, like, like starting this with you. I was like, oh, it's time. Okay, good. Who do I want to talk to? I mean, like jump, when something like just shows up and I'm like, oh, and then just responding like almost instantly. Whereas before I was like waiting or thinking too much, or I don't even know. I have no yeah. idea. So yeah. that's a gift because that's sort of like how the world works. Actually, when you look at the earth and the way it functions, it's like, and I've, you know, I just keep asking like, what have we been asking? What have I been asking for? What have we been asking for this showing up in a totally different way? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I know, I mean, lots of the people I work with and myself included, um, other than say that kind of 48 hours of, of crazy, probably even in that though, there's been more ease and more space yes. in this time than, than I've ever chose before. And, and to me, that's really, <laughs> that really helps. Cause it's like, okay, then I know there's something, I know there's something and, and it's, and every one of us has choice. It's, you know, I see a lot of people say, Oh, this is going to get better. And this is this and that. And it's like, it d to me, it depends on what you choose. What would you mm -hmm. like to choose? Would you like your life to be greater after this? Or would you like to suffer? I mean, what would you like to choose? I love that. What? <laughs> you can, yeah, gosh, so much to say about that. <laughs> That's a whole show on itself. That's a whole show, buddy. Be your own show. Oh, man. I didn't really set a time limit for this. I So we are, I'm rounding 30 minutes, whatever. I uh oh gosh is there one other thing so like do you like for anybody that's looking at what would you what would you say to people that are like maybe doing that thing of wobbling you know the wobble of like i really want to start something but i don't know how to start something but i but i should <laughs> and for those of you guys listening to this i just bit my nails um <laughs> gosh do you what would you say yeah um, honestly, I would just say start. And I know for a lot of people that's really overwhelming because start how, start where, they've got all the questions. Then, then find a business coach or find somebody, find some information, get a book or something, uh, go online, listen to podcasts, like do, do take some sort of an action. Because what often happens is if we have that kind of energy for a creation, and we go into the distractor implant of doubt or the crazy or the mimicking of whatever people are in right now, um, then that just sets us up for a reason and justification to, to judge us. So even if you go, yeah, you know what, I'm going to start the business. So what book could I read? Um, you know, might need to search online. I know our libraries are closed here. So um, whatever you can do to find some information or talk to somebody or hire a coach or something, um, and, and, I, and I'm just going to say this. So, and, and Crystal might have a totally different, um, you know, suggestion than I do. Uh, but much like we were talking about before with the, the years and years we've put into it, our art, the amount of times that I get somebody requesting me to pick my brain, um, please don't do that. 
that is not kind. Because <laughs> I will actually tell you no, and I will give you the paid option. Um, but that just comes from years and years and years of that. And I have, much like Crystal, billions of free radio shows on the topic that you can you can listen to um yeah. but coach something or maybe you do know maybe maybe you're um you're able to do some sort of something online and you have the information of how to do it then just start and don't get caught up in the numbers you know this is something i spent way too many years in of how many people were there how many people showed up how like it actually doesn't matter it really yeah. doesn't just start and, and put it out there. And if you don't know how, somebody does. Ask on Facebook or your social media platform. Ask a question. Who can help me? Be willing to yeah. pay them or to do something, but ask. Yeah, yeah, that's what I find too. It's like when, when I'm finally ready to actually take action on something and I go seeking, I always find. I always find the resource. I always find the person. I always find the article. I always find the podcast that leads me to this, that leads me to that, that gets me to the thing, that gets me to the thing I needed. Um, and so it's, it's just choose, just choose it and go and start where it occurs to you to start. Cause I think the greatest gift of access for me is exactly what you said sort of at the beginning, which is that you always know, it's just that knowing doesn't show up with bells and ribbons and angels singing. It shows up as a random idea in your head somewhere that you sort of follow that you end up down a rabbit hole that you go this way and you're like, Oh, it just happened to me. No, no, didn't just happen to you. Like you actually can lead yourself anywhere you're willing to go if you're willing to follow that first thing, which doesn't usually make sense. And that's, that's actually what I've been doing lately more and more is like going, I'm just going to follow the random shit. Cause like, it's so random, right? It's so much more random than it's ever seemed before. And so like, that's why I mess. I'm like, I'm going to start a show. Okay, great. Who do I want to talk to? Glenice. Okay. Literally that's how much thought went into it. And I was like, do you want to? You're like, yes. And I was like, perfect. We'll, you'll, we'll meet. And that's like, that's the exactly what happens when you want to start something. And you're like, if you, but if you keep going into, I don't know how, then you won't know how. And, and that's the thing to really, I just say all the time to people, it's like, that's the first way that you negate you. So you can just switch it around to, if I did know where would I start and, and empower yourself that way. Business for me is, has been about continuing every day of getting up and going, what's required of me today? What do I, what would be fun? Um, would anything be fun? No. Okay. I'll go take a bath. I'll go swim in the pool, <laughs> you know, like, but just staying like really present with just whatever's there, what's there and what, and what can you choose? Is there anything I can choose to move this forward today is something else that I'm like constantly functioning from I love that oh please so what's your so if you could say one last thing what would it be what else is possible that we have <laughs> never even considered <laughs> it's so deep I know right <laughs> <laughs> do you I have know if nobody used any other tool except that question for three months, their life would change. I know that. That's I'm bold. Putting that out there. Do you have a free link or something that you want to give people or something you want to talk about or that you're I doing? I do. Yeah, I have a, a daily email going out with either a question or a tool or a, um, clearing. Uh, and it, I think we're on day 20 right now or something. When, when people sign up, they get day one. So they're not going to start that. They'll, they'll get day one. And that will stay active no matter what. Even if people are listening to this six years down the road, it'll still be there. It just the, the content might have changed a little bit because right now it's quite focused on the, the virus stuff. But they're all the tools that you can use all the time for all the things. So um, do you want me to give you that weird link or? Yeah. I'll get it from you and then I'll post because we actually our Facebook live ended a while ago. So we're going to be posting a recording. I got messages from a few people. They're like, your live is not live anymore. And I was, I looked down a live video and anyway, we need to talk to Facebook about their streaming apparatus, whatever. So I will post it where we post this and I'll make sure that people get it in an email too, so that they can connect with you because you're a rock star. And I'm Thank so you. grateful. Thank for you. I'm so grateful for you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming and chatting with me. And I think we should do it again sometime. Thank you. Yes, I would <laughs> love to. <you. laughs>
All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'm sure at some point I'll have a subscribe link and I'll make sure you get Glenisa's stuff. And uh, our just tip for today is just, just fucking start. Just do it. That's it. We'll see you guys on the next show. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>